Good morning. We might have left Watchtower, but we most certainly have not left God or Jesus Christ. And the Bible is full of stories of where to go for help in a crisis. So today's story is about Abigail who got abducted along with many others. Now, Abigail, you'll remember, was the one that saved David from committing a serious sin of killing innocent people. But she married him. Now, her life wasn't idyllic because David was still running away from King Saul, who was out to kill him. So they were wandering in the wilderness. Now, the situation got so serious that David went to a Philistine king, that's Achish, the king of Gath, and asked to, for safety. Now, David had 600 men with him, along with their wives and children, so there would have been maybe 2,000 people with him. David asked for a, con a, country, sorry, a country town, and the king of Gath gave him Ziklag. Now, at this point, we might have a look at the map. The Philistines had the territory along the Mediterranean Sea. Gath is at the top of the page. Ziklag is approximately where I've put the X, just northwest of Beersheba. The Amalekites come into the story and they lived south of the Dead Sea in the desert. They were descendants of Esau. They were not the nicest people. Now there came a time when the Philistine kings decided that they were going to fight against Israel. So there were several kings and they banded together and David and his 600 men came along with the king of Gath. Now the other Philistine kings objected to David being there. He was a Hebrew and they said, look, in the middle of battle, David will change sides and he'll fight for Israel, not against them. Now that was very astute of them because that is what David would have done. So David gets sent home and it's a good thing he was because when they got back to Ziklag they discovered the Amalekites had raided the town. They had taken captive every soul, every person that was in the town along with animals and anything of value and then they torched the, the town. In 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 4, it says, Then David and the people with him wept aloud till they were too weak to weep any more. Now David was in quite a dangerous position because his men blamed him. David hadn't left anybody to protect the city. They were going to stone him. But in verse 6 of that chapter, it says, David took courage from Yahweh his God. And it's obviously a good example for us. Now there are several Psalms that David wrote while he was running away from Saul, but one of them is in Psalm 18, where he says in verse 1, I love you, Yahweh, my strength. Verse 2, Yahweh is my rock, my bastion, my deliverer is my God. I take shelter in him, my rock, my shield, my horn of salvation, my stronghold and my refuge. From violence you rescue me. And God can do the same for us. So the Lord said to David to chase after the Amalekites and he would recover everything. Now some of the men with David discovered a young man who was sort of very, very ill, left in a field. They gave him some water and some food, some bread and figs and raisins, and gradually he revived. And it turned out he was a young Egyptian and he was enslaved to one of the Amalekites who had raided the city of Ziklag. So David said to him, would he be willing to show them where the Amalekite camp was? And the Egyptian said he would, but he made David swear that he wouldn't kill him and he wouldn't restore him to his Amalekite master. David agreed. So off they went and they found the camp. Now the Amalekites had made a serious mistake. They must have thought that David was away on a war campaign. So they were singing and dancing and drinking. They were all over the place. No discipline, no order. So David was able to rout them quite easily. 
Now, if you want to read the details, which are a bit gory, they're in 1 Samuel chapter 30. Anyway, David recovers everybody and everything. Abigail, her fellow wives, all the children and all the flocks. And they go back to the town. There must have been some houses left unburnt. Two days later, David is given the news that Saul has died in that battle with the Philistines. This leaves the way open for David to become king, first of all over Judah and then over the whole of Israel. So Abigail's life, although it must have been very frightening to be kidnapped like that, she now had a much more stable life being with David as he was now king and they could settle eventually in the city of Jerusalem. So all of us can look forward to a similar sort of happy ending when the kingdom comes. Our dear father will look after us as he looked after David and Abigail. Take care and God bless.